Hi everybody, uh, this is uh, uh, what I expect will be a short video, uh, the purpose of which is to talk a little more about the uh, so-called trick problem that we did uh, today in class. And today is uh, February 7th, 2022. Now before we get to that problem though, I want to make a preliminary remark, uh, which I think might be of interest to you. So um, when we're talking about this little m or capital M notation, as we said today in class, it's very important that you understand how many independent variables there are. So for instance, um, suppose that we have f1 of x, y, z is equal to little m3 and f2 of w, x, y, z is equal to little m3. Are these the same function? Well, the answer is no, they are not the same function. And to see that that is the case, we can proceed as follows. Remember that a min, okay, well, first of all, remember that little m refers to a min term. And so uh, in each case, we have a min term, and a min term <clears throat> is a product of all the variables under consideration, all the independent variables in either uh, complemented or uncomplemented form. So over here, in the, uh, when we're talking about f1 of xyz is equal to little m3, well, uh, in that case, then, that means that F1 of XYZ is equal to, okay, we're going to say X, Y, Z, and now we need to figure out which ones of those variables get primed. So we look at the number 3, and we write that in binary as 0, 1, 1, and so that means that uh, we want to choose the primes uh, so that um, the term x, y, z uh, is equal, well, once we put the primes there, that that term will be equal to 1. Remember, we, re we name min terms by when they are equal to 1. So we want it to be equal to 1 when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, and z is equal to 1. And so therefore, we need to put the prime with the x and therefore uh, f1 of xyz is equal to x prime yz. That will be equal to 1 when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, and z is equal to 1, and that sequence 0, 1, 1 is the binary representation of 3. So that's what f1 of xyz is equal to. Now we look at f2 of w, x, y, and z, and <clears throat> f2 of w, x, y, z, well, remember <clears throat> that uh, now a min term of f2, since there are four independent variables, this min term must have four variables in it. All, all four of W, X, Y, and Z. W, X, Y, and Z. And then we write three, and three written as a four-bit binary number will be zero, zero, one, one. And so this time we have W prime, X prime, Y, and Z. So you can see that definitely F1 and f2 are not the same function. And in fact, even if we consider f1 as a function now 
of W, X, Y, and Z, well, uh, notice that F1 is independent of W. And so if we wanted to consider F1 as a function of W, X, Y, and Z, okay, well, <clears throat> we could do that in the following way. We can say, well, X prime Y, Z is the same thing as one ended with X prime Y, Z. And that one could be rewritten as W or W prime X prime Y, Z. And so F1 would then be equal to W X prime Y, Z or W prime X prime Y, Z. And once we write F1 in that form, it's very clear that F1 is not equal to F2. So even though this original expression might have made you think that F1 of XYZ was the same function as F2 of WXYZ, that is not the case. So the, what you should take away from these comments is that uh, a min term, or a max term for that matter, either one, to know what it's equal to, it is critical that you know what the independent variables are. Okay, so just just keep that in mind. Now, one more remark down here uh, before we um, proceed. Suppose you wanted uh, the max term expansion of F1 or F2. Well, remember the max term expansion is just whatever is not present in the min term expansion. So what I mean by that is F1 of X, Y, Z would be equal to the sum, excuse me, the product. With max terms, we talk about products. So we have the product of the max terms, and uh, this will be now the up here, this is a min term expansion for F1. This is a min term expansion for F2. So the min term expansion for F1 only has little m3 in it, and therefore the max term expansion for F1 will be capital M 0, 1, 2, we skip 3 because that's in the min term expansion, and then we go 4, five, six, seven. That is the max term expansion for F1 of XYZ. The, the max term expansion for F2 of WXYZ will be the product of the max terms 0, 1, 2, we skip 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So you can see a lot more max terms there. And the way that I knew that I needed to keep on going was that, uh, and this is an important point, you need to look, at, once again, it's very important to look at these independent variables, and they will tell you how far to go. Uh, over here in the left-hand case, since there were three independent variables, we go up to two to the third power, which is eight, minus one, and so the maximum is seven. Uh, for F2, there are four independent variables, so we go up to 2 to the 4th minus 1, which is 15. Okay? So those are um, a few remarks, and all of that should really emphasize to you the importance of looking 
at the uh, exactly what the independent variables are and how many of them there are. So now let's look at this problem uh, from the lecture today, this tricky problem, and we can see that uh, where the error was and what needs to be done to correct it. So if we go up to this, um, like I say, the problem that was referred to as being tricky, we, uh, you, you will remember, let me just refresh your memory, that in problem one, we dealt with the problem f of x, y, z equals x, y, or z, right up here. And we found out that the midterm expansion for that was this. Okay. Now, in problem, when we got to this tricky problem, we said, suppose that g of w, x, y, z is equal to x, y, or z. And we stated then that the, since this is the same formula, then it will be the same max term expansion. But based on what we have just seen, we can see that that is not true. Because just because the, uh, the midterm expansions are the same, that doesn't mean that the formula will be the same or vice versa. Because these two functions, g and f, are functions of different uh, numbers of independent variables. And so we have to be more careful than that. So let's see what we can do uh, and what the midterms are. So I'm going to erase that and um, the follow-up work down here and we'll see what we can have this is it's real straightforward once you uh, uh, see it and, and this is really just a matter of having uh, gotten into a, a rush and trying to skip a step and of course anytime you do that then there's a the potential for a mistake so let's see what we get okay now definitely our previous work you know, the, uh, up here, the work that we did on F, since F and G have the same formulas, any work we did with uh, in the algebraic form can still be carried on. It's only when we went to the min terms that we have to be careful. Okay, so, so we found out above that X, Y, or Z was equal to this. So I'm going to write that down here, X, Y, or Z is equal to x, y, z, or x, y, z prime, or x, y prime, z, or x prime, y, z, or x prime, y prime, z. That is the same as what we had there and everything is fine there but these uh, expressions down here are no longer min terms because now we have four independent variables rather than three so each one of these terms needs to have a w in it in order to be a min term and the way that we can do this then is that each term can be ended with w or w prime. So actually, each of these terms will give two min terms. Okay, we'll have a w, x, y, z. Actually, I'll write like this. We'll have a w prime x, y, z or w, x, y, z. That's what uh, the, the, this first term, when we write it, it, it is a min term if there's only three independent variables. But if we go to four independent variables, then it becomes the sum of these two min terms. Okay? And likewise, the next one becomes W prime X, Y, Z prime, or w x y z prime the next one becomes w prime x y prime z uh, or and i'll write it in here or w 
x, y prime, z. The next one is w prime, x prime, y, z, or w, x prime, y, z. And then the last one is w prime, x prime, y prime, z, or w, x prime, y prime, z. Okay, and now if we uh, write the numbers for those. Um, remember that when we're uh, number when we're trying to find the names of min terms, the prime variables get zeros and the unprimes get one. So we'll have zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. One, one, zero, 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 one, 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 zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one. And so now we see that G of w, x, y, z is equal to the sum of the min terms. Okay, um, let's see. The 0, 1, 1, 1 uh, is 7. 0, 1, 1, 0 is 6. 0, 1, 0, 1 is 5. Zero zero one one is three. Zero 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 one is one. One 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 is uh, fifteen. One 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 zero is fourteen. One one zero one is uh, uh, thirteen. One zero one one is eleven. And finally, 1, 0, 0, 1 is 9. Now, as we have said in class, um, it is traditional in this little n notation to write these numbers in ascending order. So we would have the sum of them in terms uh, 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, uh, 9, 11, <clears throat> 13, 14, 15. That is the correct min term expansion for G of W, X, Y, Z. So we have 1, 3, 5, 6, 7. Indeed, we have those. But we also have 9, 11, 13, 14, 15. And notice that 9 is 1 plus 8, 11 is 3 plus 8, 13 is 5 plus 8, 14 is 6 plus 8. 15 is 7 plus 8. And so, and the reason for that, of course, is that each time all we've done is we've uh, had to end what we originally had with W prime, but also with W. And so, um, uh, in one case, we get a 0 right there, and then a 1. And so, that, that second number is 8 larger than the first number. And you can see that happens in each case. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So, so this would be the min term expansion for G. And now that you have the correct min term expansion for G, you can say that the max term expansion for G uh, would be now, now keep in mind, uh, we have four independent variables, so we're going to go all the way up to 2 to the 4th minus 1, or 16 minus 1 is 15. 15 is already in the list of min terms, so we won't go to there. We won't go to 15 either because it's, uh, excuse me, 14, it's in the min term list. We won't go to 13 because it's in the min term list, but 12 will be the highest number in the max term. So we'll have, we can start with 0, so we have 0, 
We don't have one because the one is right here. We do have a two because it's not in the list. Three is there, so we skip that. Four is not there, so we would put that. Five, six, and seven we skip. Eight we include. We don't include nine because it's right here. Ten we do include. Eleven we do not include. And then twelve we will include. And uh, that is uh, it for the max term expansion for G. Okay, so, so the final remark I want to make is this. You can see that uh, <clears throat> little f of x, y, z, which is equal to x, y, or z, had five terms right here in its min term expansion and three terms in its max term expansion. Now down here, when we have exactly the same algebraic formula, but consider this to be a function of four independent variables rather than uh, three, now we will have twice as many min terms instead of five you can count them, we have 10, and we also have twice as many max terms. Instead of three, we have six. So, uh, and once again, one last thing is just like with the min terms, notice how the max terms will uh, come in pairs that differ by eight. We have zero and eight, two and 10, four and 12. Okay, so um, once again, the, the um, whole point of this is to be very careful when you're in the min term or max term uh, representation, little m or capital M notation, be very careful to make sure you understand what the independent variables are and how many of them there are so that you can um, handle everything correctly. So that's the uh, end of this uh, brief um, video uh, concerning uh, lecture 8 of Electroengineering 235. Uh, take care, and I will talk to you soon.